The Resident Evil movies are undoubtedly gigantic hits at the box office, having raked in over $244 million since the premiere of the first film in 2012. And while these movies are definitely a departure from the games that inspired them, we still get to see some of our favorite characters on the big screen. Let's put the likes of Claire Redfield, Jill Valentine, and other Resident Evil mainstays under the scope, and check how the cast of Resident Evil should really look. Chris Redfield one of the most iconic characters in the Resident Evil series. Many fans know Chris Redfield for destroying doors, smashing the heads of bioorganic weapons, and some of the worst acting in video game history. You did a really good job. This case was just too weird. This case was... His enormous, bulging muscles were his true weapons, but he still whipped out a firearm to get some real work done. Despite his importance to the games, he doesn't appear on the big screen until the fourth film in the series, where he's played by Wentworth Miller. Obviously, Miller isn't quite as jacked as his digital counterpart, but he's just as tough. His screen outfits are far from what Chris Redfield wore in the video games. Instead of short sleeves with BSAA patches on them, he wears some kind of tactical field jacket. He's got plenty of gear strapped onto his torso, but his all-grey ensemble just makes him look like a bootleg Ghostbuster. Claire Redfield Ali Lata breathes life into Claire Redfield, sister to Chris and heroine to Resident Evil fans everywhere. On the big screen, Claire doesn't keep her signature ponytail, but she does retain her vest. We're not sure where you can pick up vests that feature little pockets for combat knives, but it's probably safe to assume it's not actually a thing in real life. And if it is, don't lie, you probably use it for hot dogs anyhow. Also absent are the gloves and Claire's black short-sleeved turtleneck, all making the big screen Claire more badass than the original. And given that a ponytail is basically just a handlebar designed to be grabbed by undead monsters, maybe letting her hair down was a good tactical decision. Jill Valentine Tube top? Check. Short brunette hair in a bob cut? Check. Mini skirt? Check. Sienna Guillory's Jill Valentine seems to be the most accurate portrayal of a Resident Evil character possible. Sure, this was only her dressed-down look for Resident Evil 3, and post-apocalyptic heroes fighting through hordes of biting enemies should probably put on a coat or something. But let's all appreciate the risks she takes to look good. In Resident Evil Retribution, Jill returns as a blonde villainess, which is a pitch-perfect version of her evil form in Resident Evil 5, complete with the device on her chest and her one-piece outfit. Albert Wesker as far as bad guys go, Albert Wesker is one of the most arrogant. Seven minutes is all I can spare to play with you. If his glowing, red eyes weren't a dead giveaway that he's evil, then maybe his frosted tips are. In Resident Evil Afterlife, we see him played by actor Sean Roberts. He's got the sunglasses, and those tips definitely seem frosted. But something about him still feels a little… off. Perhaps it's because Sean Roberts was only in his mid-twenties when he filmed the role, and Wesker is supposed to be much older, like he was in Resident Evil Extinction, when he was played by Jason O'Mara. Other than that, everything was pretty spot on. Black leather and bad guys just go together. Leon Kennedy not as brawny as Chris, Leon Kennedy is still one of the coolest characters in Resident Evil. But there are some stark differences between his appearance in Resident Evil 4 and actor Johan Erb's version in Resident Evil Retribution. Basically, it was just too difficult to find someone with Leon's hair, which director Paul W.S. Anderson confirmed in an interview with Collider. Ada Wong we see the acrobatic Ada Wong portrayed by actress Bing Bing Lee in Resident Evil Retribution, wearing her signature red outfit, which is a fairly faithful representation of the video game character, from the hairstyle down to the yellow butterflies on her dress. The accuracy of the portrayal is so impressive that it looks like Ada stepped out of the game's code and into the movie. She even performs that incredible disarm using a front handspring kick in the movie. This one's just perfect. Carlos Oliveira Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was Carlos Oliveira's first video game appearance, helping Jill Valentine escape the zombie-infested Raccoon City. In the films, he's portrayed by Odid Fair, who you might remember as Ardeth Bay from The Mummy. For some reason, Fair just can't escape the undead. As you might be able to tell, there's a big difference between the small screen and big screen characters. Carlos is supposed to be youthful, with medium-length hair, whereas Fair is more mature with a shorter haircut and more of a desert soldier look. It's not an unpleasant departure from the original character's look, but it's a surprising change when compared to the accuracy of the other characters. Barry Burton Whenever we think of sandwiches, we think of the majestically bearded Barry Burton. That was too close. 
You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life. In Resident Evil Retribution, the beard is brought to life by Kevin Durand, who wears a red vest and assortment of straps and holsters similar to that of the original character design. The biggest difference is that Kevin Durand's face is just too friendly. The video game character looks a lot more hardened in later iterations of the series. But hey, much respect for the attention to detail on the outfits. It's almost enough to make you forgive how nobody spoke of sandwiches. Almost. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.